bright duty. Every student matters. In this question, a child has a die whose six faces are shown th as these letters, right? So this is a certain kind of die. This is not a standard die. This has got six faces shown like this, okay? Now this die is thrown once. What is the probability of getting an A or D? So first part, probability of getting an A. So when we are talking about A, what are the number of favorable cases? This is a favorable case, this is a favorable case. So two cases are there which are favorable to us. And what is the total number of outcomes? Six. So two by six is the probability of getting an A. That is one by three. Probability of getting a D. Now, in this circumstance, what are the number of favorable cases? Only this case is favorable. So, one case is favorable by total number of six cases. So, one by six is the probability of getting a D. Now, suppose you drop a die at random on this rectangle here, which has got dimensions 3 meter and 2 meter. Right. What is the probability that it will land inside the circle with a diameter of 1 meter? So when you throw a die and it needs to fall in this circle, we need the probability of that. So probability of that it will land inside the circle will be equal to, we cannot count number of favorable cases or number of total cases in this. So what we can look at this question and tell that there is a there is an area which is favorable to us. That area is that circular region and there is this total area which is the area of this rectangle. So if it falls in this area, it will be a favorable case. So area of circle here is pi radius square. So radius is 1 by 2 square, right? So this is equal to pi by 4 meter square. And total area, area of rectangle is equal to length into breadth, that is 3 into 2, 6 meter square. So what is the favorable area here, if I can say pi by 4? What is the total area? 6. So the probability is pi by 24, right? And probability will not have any unit here, right? You cannot write meter square or something because this is a number, okay, without any unit. A lot consists of 144 ball pens, 144 ball pens, out of which 20 are defective, so defective 20 and others are good. So how many are good? 124, 144 minus 20, 124 is the number of good pens. Nuri will buy a pen if it is good, okay, but will not buy if it is defective, fair enough. The shopkeeper draws one pen at random and gives it to her. What is the probability that she will buy it? Probability she will buy it. Okay, tell me what are the number of favorable outcomes? She will buy it only if it is good, right? So these are our favorable outcomes. So 124 is the number of favorable outcomes. What is the total number of outcomes? 144, right? So you can write this as 4 3s are 12, 4 1s are 4, 4 3s are 12, 4 6 are 24. So 31 by 36 is the probability that she will buy it. Second, probability that she will not buy it. She will not buy it. Now you can look at it from this perspective also that she will not buy it if it is defective, 
right so what are the favorable outcomes this time 20 right divided by the total outcomes 144 right so 4 5s are 20 4 3s are 12 4 6 are 24 5 by 36 otherwise you could have also thought about it that you could get she will not buy it is equal to 1 minus she will buy it so 1 minus 124 by 144 which is again equal to 20 by 144 and it would have given you the same answer right so this was about this question okay we need to complete this table based on a question that we did in the introduction lecture where we threw two dice right and we we uh, talked about the sum of the numbers on the faces of these two dice so we made a table also of the possible outcomes so i am doing this first part here where we will complete this table so what were the possible outcomes there were 36 possible outcomes of like this 1 1 1 2 1 3 and so on up to the last was 6 6 so we made a matrix or we made a table uh, like thing and we wrote those 36 outcomes there now we need to talk about sum on two dice when is this sum 2 there is only one case when the sum is 2 that is this case 1 1 ok we get 1 on first die and 1 on second die so that is 1 by 36 it is given as an example so when is this sum 3 so sum of 3 can be got if let us start with the first die first die gives us 1 then the second die will have to give us 2 right for the sum to be 3 if the first die gives us 2 the second die will have 1 for the sum to be 3 now I cannot write any other case here because if the first die gives anything apart from 1 and 2 let us say it gives us 3 so I cannot have 0 on the second die this is not a possible case so these are the only two possible favorable cases for us so sum of 3 can be got in two ways here so the probability of getting a sum of 3 on two dice is favorable cases that is 2 divided by total cases that is 36 this is probability of sum of 3 so that is 2 by 36 or 1 by 18 right so let me write 2 by 36 here or you can write 1 by 18 here okay now the sum on two dice has to be 4 so sum of 4 you start with the first die having 1 okay and then you take all the cases in that way you will not miss any case so if 1 is on the first die 3 will be on the second to make it 4 then you take 2 on the first die on the second die you will have to have 2 to make it 4 then 3 on the first one 1 on the second one you cannot have 4 on the first one and 0 on the second one so that is not possible so only 3 possible favorable circumstances are there so probability of getting a sum of 4 is 3 by 36 or you can say 1 by 12 right sum of 5 can be obtained by having 1 on first 4 on second 2 on first 3 on second 3 on first 2 on second 4 on first and 1 on second there is no other way of getting a sum of 5 on these two faces right so there are four favorable outcomes so the probability is 4 by 36 that is 1 by 9 sum of 6 
can be obtained by having 1 on first 5 on second 2 on first 4 on second 3 on first 3 on second right these are the cases which are possible so how many are these 1 2 3 4 5 so 5 favorable cases by total 36 sum of 7 can be obtained you write it yourself 1 6 2 5 3 4 4 3 5 2 6 1 right you start with 1 on the first die then 2 on the first die 3 4 5 6 these are the only options that we can have on the first die and the second die you just make the sum as 7 so if 1 is there on the first second will have 6 so 1 2 3 4 5 6 6 cases are favorable cases to us so sum of 7 the probability is 6 by 36 that is 1 by 6 okay 8 is already given 5 by 36 right so let us calculate for sum of 9 sum of 9 can be obtained like this if I have 1 on the first die can we have 8 on the second one no if I have 2 on the first die can I have sec 7 on the second one no because you cannot have a number more than 6 on a die right so we will start with 3 here if I have 3 on the first one 6 on the second one 4 5 5 4 6 3 so these 4 cases are are favorable outcomes so 4 by 36 or 1 by 9 is the answer for a sum of 10 again I cannot start with 1 on first die because I can never have 9 on second die 2 8 is also not possible 3 7 is also not possible I am writing these cases just for the clarity otherwise I could have started with 4 on the first and 6 on second this is an acceptable case right 5 on the first 5 on the second 6 on first die and 4 on second die these three are the only possible cases where we will have a sum of 10 right and 3 favorable by 36 total will give me 1 by 12 as my probability of getting a sum of 10 now sum of 11 sum of 11 so again I cannot start with 1 because 1 10 is not possible right 2 9 is not possible 3 8 is not possible 4 7 is not possible so 5 6 is possible case right 6 5 is another case which is possible for sum of 11 right so these two are the options which are favorable to us so 2 by 36 or 1 by 18 is the probability of getting a sum of 11 a student argues that there are 11 possible outcomes 2 sum of 2 sum of 3 sum of 4 5 6 and up to 12 because we cannot have a sum more than 12 right because this is the maximum sum this is the minimum sum so these are the possible 11 outcomes therefore each of them has a probability of 1 by 11 do you agree with this argument obviously not why because these are not equally likely outcomes right how am I able to comment on that because I have already calculated these probabilities getting a sum of 3 
the probability is 1 by 18. Whereas getting a sum of 4, the probability is 1 by 12. These are obviously not equally likely events. Hence, we cannot say the probability for each one of them is 1 by 11. Otherwise, we wouldn't have to, you know, calculate this first part here. Right? So, the answer to this second part is we do not agree with this argument because we have already calculated the probabilities these are not equal hence these events are not equally likely okay so let's move to this next question here a game consists of tossing a one rupee coin three times right tossing of a coin three times we have done such a case in our introduction lecture and noting its outcome each time Hanif wins if all the tosses give the same result that is head 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 or tail 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 these are the only two outcomes where Hanif wins these outcomes Hanif wins okay and loses otherwise calculate the probability that Hanif will lose the game right so we need to calculate that Hanif loses the game so number of favorable cases by number of total cases are these are favorable cases no because in this in these two cases Hanif wins so what are the cases favorable to us anything apart from these two right so we calculated in the introduction part i would suggest that you go to the introduction and look at the tossing of three coins so what are what were the total number of outcomes two raised to power three eight outcomes were there right so out of those eight outcomes these two are not favorable to us so how many are favorable to us six outcomes are favorable to us and divided by total outcomes that is 8 so that is 3 by 4 is the probability that Hanif will lose the game right I have done this question in introduction part but let me tell you what are the total outcomes we can get head 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 on all three coins head head on first two and T on third coin head tail head right and tail head head tail 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 head tail head tail okay which one is remaining head tail tail is remaining so these were the eight cases eight possible outcomes out of these these two are not favorable to us that means these six are favorable to us so six by total of eight is three by four which is the probability that Hanif loses the game A die is thrown twice so what is the probability that 5 will not come up either time so a die when a die is thrown twice the possible outcomes are 1 1 1 2 1 3 going like this going up to 6 6 so 36 possible outcomes right total outcomes are 36 what are the favorable outcomes where 5 will not come up either time 
five will not come up either time right so we need to uh, we need to look for outcomes where five doesn't come on the first die five doesn't come on the second die so what are those outcomes when five comes on the first die let us say how many cases are such five comes on the first die one on second five on first two on second five on first three on second these are the outcomes where five is coming on the first die out of these this is the outcome where five is coming on both the dies so where five comes on the second die only one five two five three five four five this case we have already counted here so we will not count it here so six five these are the cases where five comes up one of the times at least so one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven such cases are there which are not favorable to us so favorable outcomes are 36 minus 11 that is 25 so the probability 5 will not come up either time is equal to 25 by 36 right now look at the second part here 5 will come up at least once right if 5 comes at least once now these cases become our favorable cases then so what are what is the number of these cases 11 so second part probability 5 comes up at least once or at least in one die right so this is equal to 11 favorable by total of 36 okay otherwise you could have subtracted this from 1 and you could have got the same answer here so 11 by 36 is the probability that 5 comes up at least once which of the following arguments are correct and which are not correct give reasons for your answer so this is uh, theory part if two coins are tossed simultaneously there are three possible outcomes two heads two tails or one of each this much part is correct right because when two coins are tossed you will get head 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 tails tail head or tail tail these are the only possible cases four cases so possible outcomes are two heads two tails or one on each so this much is correct therefore for each of these outcomes the probability is 1 by 3 no because these outcomes are not equally likely in nature right this case having one on each is twice as likely as getting head on both or tail on both right because we have got two favorable cases for this whereas only one favorable case for this and one favorable case for this so this is not correct because these three events are not equally likely you will write that these three events are not equally likely right because one on each is twice as likely as getting two heads or two tails right so this is the reason if a die is thrown there are two possible outcomes either you will have 
an odd number or an even number. So what are the possible outcomes when you throw a dice? When you throw a die, you will have these as possible outcomes. So either you will have an odd number, yes, or an even number, correct. So this much part is correct. Therefore, the probability of getting an odd number is 1 by 2, yes, because there are 3 odd numbers, right, out of 6. So probability of getting an odd number in a throw of a die is 3 by 6, that is 1 by 2, it is correct. So, this second part is correct because getting an even number or an odd number in a throw of a die is equally likely. Okay. So, this was about this exercise of probability. I hope the concepts of probability are clear and the way to attempt these questions is clear to you. In the next exercise, I will try to bring some of the questions which are of a little more difficulty level and the questions which appeared in your previous year board examinations, right? Thank you.